A couple of other executive orders that we are also announcing today are around the issues of property tax relief, uh, both for residences uh, as well as business, the personal uh, business property tax that uh, people are required to pay north of $100,000. Uh, both are familiar uh, to many uh, individuals that may be watching. And there was some uh, clarity a few months back as it relates to penalties associated and fees uh, related to uh, the assessment of property taxes. And we made the point that we were working with the counties uh, to see if we can coordinate and collaborate in a way that can address the hardship claims that were coming in and allow people to get on payment plans without experiencing that rather sizable 10% uh, tax code penalty uh, that is assessed uh, on those property tax bills. We've been working with the county associations, and this executive order will provide even more clarity in this space and extend through next May, extend through next May, the penalty waiver for fees and related fines associated with that 10% uh, tax code uh, requirement that will allow people, again, with hardships uh, to get on payment plans and not have to experience that penalty uh, at least through the end of next May. So we think this is significant clarification. We think this could be significant relief, particularly that timeline uh, that extends into the new year. Uh, as many of us have had that 10 percent fee assessed through no fault of our own, maybe just neglect, uh, maybe uh, naive uh, about the penalty being so uh, strong right now. Uh, many people just struggling to make ends meet, uh, and those property tax bills are so large for people and, and so challenging at this time uh, that uh, we wanted to provide this clarity in that executive order that we signed today as well. We'll do just that. As I said, we extend this, not just this relief, uh, to uh, personal residences. Uh, we are extending the deadline uh, for property, uh, rather personal property, uh, for taxes associated with businesses. Uh, that currently uh, is a May 7th deadline where you would then have that same 10% uh, tax under the tax code. We're extending that through just May 31st of this month. So for residences, uh, we extend through next year. For businesses, uh, we're providing small businesses that relief at least through the end of the month to give people some more time. We've been working with the Board of Equalization on this. Uh, uh, they were assessing how many calls they were getting, how many concerns uh, that were being raised, and uh, providing at least a little bit more time will give us a little bit more time as well to provide more clarity uh, through the end of this month. So that's the framework today of these executive orders, hopefully providing some clarity uh, in areas where we're getting a lot of inquiry and hopefully providing a little bit of relief uh, for many people uh, that are anxious uh, because of uh, the economic challenges of this moment. Uh, the economic challenges, as you know well, are quite extraordinary. We are now facing uh, the need to uh, continue to provide uh, unprecedented support to people that are filing uninsurance uh, uh, claims and PUA claims, these pandemic unemployment assistance grants. Uh, over 4.2 million people uh, now in that system, 477,000 uh, of those uh, under the PUA program. But $10.6 billion now has been distributed. Uh, remarkably, just since Sunday, $2 billion has been distributed uh, from the UI and PUA accounts. Uh, so now north of 10 billion, 10.6, uh, 2 billion now, just in less than a week of, uh, of dollars that we're getting out as quickly as we can. I, I bring that up proactively, consistently, uh, because I recognize so many of you uh, can't wait much longer can't wait on a line for a human being to answer the phone call or wait for your claim to be adjudicated, wait for uh, some questions to be cleared up or wait to get that debit card or check in the mail. Uh, just know uh, they are continuing to work uh, as hard as they possibly can at the EDD department and uh, had another conference call this morning with Julie Sue and her team uh, continuing to try to do everything they can in their power to get these claims turned around. But $2 billion. Uh, just since Sunday uh, through this week, uh, almost $11 billion, uh, now uh, in total, again, without precedent, 
uh, in our state's history. And you'll see these numbers translating to unemployment rates uh, very, very soon, not only in the state of California, across this country, uh, that will be rather jaw-dropping. It's sober, and uh, we've anticipated it, and it's also reflected and will be reflected in budgets, both local budgets, state budgets, certainly in the national budget, uh, in communities all across the United States. Our budget uh, comes out, what we call the May revise, uh, on May 14th. Uh, so in a few days, uh, those numbers uh, will be made more visible, more real to people uh, as we're all working overtime to make sure we submit a balanced budget. We talk about California being a nation state. The only distinction by that, it's a figurative term, not a literal term. The one thing uh, that we uh, don't have is a printing press. We are accountable to balancing our budgets, and I'll continue to make this point as we've made on multiple occasions. We can't do this without the federal government. Uh, we really need leadership at the federal level uh, to provide the magnitude of supports, not just for this state, California, but for cities and counties all across uh, California, uh, where revenues have simply just fallen off a cliff uh, in just weeks, uh, not even months. And so, uh, again, these unemployment numbers uh, portend that future. And so I just want to highlight and bracket the unemployment conversation in light of that conversation. Let me now go back to the opening conversation about moving people back into phase two, back into the economy through this phase two process. Uh, we'll be putting out guidelines um, as early uh, as tomorrow uh, as it relates to uh, the industries that will begin uh, to make modifications to our stay away order and industries that will be allowed to move with adaptation and modifications into this second phase primarily in the retail space, but also in the manufacturing and logistics space. Uh, yesterday, we were a small business in Sacramento uh, that will be the beneficiary of these changes that will begin to do curbside uh, pickup, but still a lot of work for businesses to get their modifications uh, in order. We're also working with the counties all across the state of California uh, that wish to go further, uh, clarifying uh, the expectations, what the details are in terms of the guidelines uh, on testing, tracing capacity, surge capacity, PPE, uh, and many other uh, prerequisites uh, to opening up even further. Uh, on the issue of PPE, uh, it is appropriate that I also there pause uh, and reflect uh, on this remarkable uh, moment in our history where we all took off on a plane that we were building as we were flying. Uh, we referred to the procurement of PPE across the spectrum as the wild, wild west uh, a few months back. There's been some wonderful reporting on this. I want to compliment the work of uh, one of our state newspapers, Cal Matters, and uh, credible work also being done in the Washington Post on this that highlighted some of these examples. You've seen uh, those examples in Maryland. You've seen some examples uh, specifically in well, New York, many other states, I can imagine there are hundreds and hundreds that will be exposed at cities, not just states, over the course of months uh, of some of those efforts gone awry. Uh, we've been very, well, to the extent possible, we've kind of been in real time updating you. I mentioned a few weeks back on multiple occasions some of those moldy masks that were turned back uh, that we had procured. Uh, we were able to get our money back on those. Others uh, that uh, Customs and Borders uh, took away, contracts that materialized, contracts that didn't. Um, but there was some larger contracts that certainly didn't, that didn't cost the taxpayers a penny, uh, but were cautionary tales. Uh, and a few months back, we were able to, or at least many weeks back, been able to reposition our approach to our procurement in PPE. And that led to an announcement a few weeks back about a large uh, procurement uh, with the company BYD uh, and other nonprofits. We're part of a broader consortium uh, of efforts to really secure our supply chain for the state of California. Again, why is that so important? For our first responders, for our frontline employees, and our healthcare professionals, Absolutely, our skilled nursing facility assistant, but also that PPE is critical for reopening the economy. Uh, we have this large BYD contract where we talked about the uh, product coming in in May and June, a two-month contract. We're a few days into May, uh, but we were very blessed a week or so ago to get uh, early shipments earlier than we had anticipated on the contract of uh, these surgical masks, these procedure masks. Uh, what 
that has allowed us to do is begin to move into phase two a little bit earlier than we otherwise would. Uh, let me be specific about that. We have now distributed over 15 million of those procedure masks. A few weeks ago, it was less than, well, it was about 4 million. Now we've distributed over 15 million, and we have in our possession 19.9 million uh, masks that we are now in the process of distributing. Again, we try to get in, get it out as quickly as possible. But we've never been in this position. Uh, we were the beneficiary of these larger contracts and some security in our supply chain. So that's good news on the front end. Uh, the unfortunate news, and but it's part of these larger contracts, is on the back end, we needed some certification uh, from uh, federal uh, certifications for these N95 respirator masks. That's been delayed a little bit. So on the back end, a little bit delay on the front end, uh, we uh, had a new product coming in. Uh, and so all these things work out uh, themselves. But the good news uh, is we learned a lot in that process uh, from those previous contracts. Uh, and we have partners now that we didn't have in the past, including the Department of Justice, the FBI, uh, and many others uh, that are helping scrutinize uh, these, uh, these contracts a little bit more closely, or at least those that are part of those contracts in the supply chain. And so uh, all of that was a reset a few months back. Uh, many other governors, many other mayors, city administrators uh, facing similar uh, challenges. All this will be a part of our after action report all across this country uh, where we all uh, are in a position to have learned a lot and obviously at peril of making those mistakes ever again. And that's why it's so important we hold the line on these contracts that we have secured so we can get the product in. Uh, we can continue to continue our advancement into not just phase two, but phase three, and ultimately uh, to where we want to go. And that's back to some semblance of our old normal life once we have immunity uh, and once we have a vaccine. Uh, but until then, PPE is going to be so foundational and so important uh, to these reopening efforts and, uh, and continuing to make uh, real progress in that space. And we're very pleased.